All right, East Chester State Championship softball team was rewarded last weekend. A parade was held in East Chester, and various awards were presented to the Eagles. The parade started at the high school and proceeded to town hall. They are several town and school officials, as well as two very special guests, greeted the girls. May continue to work hard, work hard as a team, set your goals and go for it. Because this proves that if you work hard and you're determined, you can do anything. The lessons that you have learned through the, the teamwork and the hard work that you put in to achieve this are going to be invaluable throughout your life. Just one week after East Chester completed its perfect 29-0 season, everybody seemed to have a different reason for the Eagles' success. Our fielding is also very, you know, sturdy, and, you know, we work hard at practice every day, but it's basically our defense. The pitching, like Bonnie and Jen, they work together and stuff, and um, a lot of the other teams couldn't really get hold of a pitch of Jen or Bonnie. And but basically our hitting really came through. I mean, even when Bonnie and I had a bad day, we, we were scoring 10 and 15 runs, so it really didn't matter either way. Uh, you know, it's just everybody having a one soupy year. The girls will carry this experience with them their whole lives, and so will their school. We're absolutely thrilled with the 29-0 uh, and 0 record. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever top this record. It's our first state championship uh, here at Eastchester. Uh, it's a really wonderful experience. It's great for the school. It's tremendous, uh, you know, for the kids. It's a good thing for the community. Uh, you know, I, I, we're just elated. For Eastchester softball team and Coach Walsh, 1990 may be one of those once-in-a-lifetime things. But at least one girl hopes it isn't. We will re lose some seniors, but, you know, we'll be strong again next year. So. Chester High School girls softball team went 29-0, won the New York State Class C Championship. So how can they top that this year? 
Oh, to Ann Hutchinson Elementary School in East Chester we go. The championship game of the East Chester Tournament against three-time New York City champion Curtis High School. Elise Seifer playing with a broken finger for East Chester. Bottom one trouble defensively for the Eagles. Tony N. Palmiato makes the error at second base and then throws the ball away. Two-run score. And Curtis from Staten Island's a 2 nothing lead. Top of the third. Eagles come back. Sue Del Vecchio smashes one down the left field line. One of the longest hits ever at Ann Hutchinson Field. Sue Teicher scores 2-1. Curtis. Still top of the third. Bonnie Bell batting lines one up the middle. Right center field that gets through. Soifer will come all the way around and score. And East Chester takes the lead by a score of 3-2. Now we go top five. Bonnie Bell up again. Left center field this time smashes one. Gets in the gap. A two-run homer. East Chester goes on top 6-2 as Bonnie Bell slides in with the Eagles' sixth run. And that was all they needed because Bell was on the mound for East Chester. Here striking out Dot Guerrero. Five strikeouts in all for Bell. And here she also plays some defense. Plays her position very well. At the line of right back to her by Carla Lucillo. And for Curtis, well, they lose their first game. They had won 16 in a row. Eileen Aponte, though, strikes out Carmela Gizzo for Curtis. She pitched the final two innings, their number one pitcher. Consolation game, Nyack defeated Nurshell 10-0. First inning, Monica Kohler with not one but two bunt singles in the first inning. Katrina Steen at shortstop for Nurshell makes an error here, one of two. Five Huguenots errors in the first inning. Eight straight Nyack base runners in a row. But the play of the day, Gerard Miller, one of our cameramen, hit with the ball. Look at this. Right back, doesn't move, doesn't wimp out. That guy is certainly no wimp as East Chester wins the tournament, the championship game by beating Curtis. It's got to be tough to throw a no-hitter in softball. I mean, everybody can hit a softball, even me. Uncommon? Well, uh, it's, it's, it's not all that common, but if you're a girl, girl softball, and you can really whip that ball fast, get the windmill motion, not, not as uncommon if you have a great pitcher. Okay. And that someone we're talking about is Bonnie Bell, and she's going to be going to North Carolina Charlotte next year, signed a softball scholarship. George Finney, by the way, another local, going to Bowling Green on a basketball scholarship. Back to Bonnie Bell. She pitches for East Chester. They've won 44 consecutive games. Bell's last outing, she threw a perfect game. Before that, she no-hit Pine Plains, giving her five career no-hitters. So let's go to East Chester and Hutchinson Elementary School. Highlights East Chester versus Pine Plains. Big crowd on hand. To watch this rematch of last year's Class C section championship for bottom one, Bonnie Bell at the plate, Sue Vecchio scores on a wild pitch. Eagles on top, 1-0, and that would be all that they needed because Bonnie Bell threw smoke on the mound. Here with a strikeout of a Pine Plains bomber batter, and here she would do it again. Bonnie struck out 12 Pine Plains girls in the game, and here you see again, making the opposition look foolish with a strikeout. Bonnie, 13-0, ERA under 0.5 on the season. East Chester still unbeaten in the 90s. Well, the Hall of Fame, two unbeaten softball teams, and wheelchair tennis, that's all coming up in sports. Here's Eric. Yep, that's on the sports menu. Started off with this week, the battle of the unbeatens in girls softball, East Chester and Our Lady of Victory. Bonnie Bell of East Chester, 15-0 against Carolyn Barr of Victory, 8-0. Something had to give. Let's go to Victory, all the action. Don Melandro, the head coach of victory, hoping his team would be the first to stop East Chester in the decade. But defense was not here this day. Look at that. A fan can't hang on to the ball. His trips over himself. He rubbed off on Our Lady of Victory because Andre Rossi's fly to center field. Dawn Wyckoff, Jen Hoffnagel collide in the outfield. Now East Chester still up. Tony and Palmiato, the batter, to center field again. Hoffnagel this time redeems her error, makes the nice catch, fires to the plate. Dana Lynch is out, a double play. Look at this. It would have been a triple play, but there was already one out. So it was only a double play. Now East Chester still up. Elise Seufer, look at a smash. He's won the left field. Wyckoff falls down. Pseudo Vecchio scores 3-0. East Chester 3 for 4 for Seufer. Skip Walsh, East Chester's team picked up 15 runs. And Bonnie Bell of East Chester gave up none. She strikes out Debbie Perez. And here Patricia O'Grady, seventh shutout of the year. Nine strikeouts for Bell in the game. And what a win because victory had been averaging 14 runs per game. Bell just one hits him as she's done all season. Turning to girls softball, East Chester still unbeaten in the 90s, taking on Our Lady of Victory. Only one loss for victory, that to East Chester. So let's go to Ann Hutch, elementary school in East Chester for the highlights. And things have been pretty good for East Chester this year. All smiles there, their coach Skip Walsh. Even when something goes wrong, Pseudo Vecchio gets hit on the head while she just laughs it off for the Eagles. 
And that's because Bonnie Bell is their pitcher extraordinaire. Here striking out Debbie Perez. She got the win. 18-0 for Bell. She picked up another shutout. And here, Eastchester will get the final out as they win 7-0. They've won 49 straight games. Bell, listen to these numbers. 143 strikeouts, just 16 walks, and a ERA 0.40. Now, speaking of champions, the East Chester girls softball team, defending Class C state champions, also have a 52-game win streak, taking on Lords two out of three to Ann Hutch we go. Now, the question is, would the light shine on the Eagles, or would they be struck with their first loss? 2-1, East Chester leading it, and Allison Antelock. Four, Our Lady of Lords will triple. Lara Catalano will score, and the game is knotted 2-2. Kathy Desolitz, up next. And he'll, she'll hit one rather right over the shortstop, Andrea Rossi's glove, off Rossi's glove. And Lords takes their first lead 3-2, and they'll go on to win it 4-2. Break East Chester's 52-game winning streak. There's Cable 3's Ray Karowski having a good time at the, de at the game. Game 2, 2-1 Eagles again lead Sudo Vecchio. With a base hit, Jennifer Teichner, Tony M. Pamiato score, and it's 4-1 East Chester. Now it's 5-2 East Chester. Desolates a two-run triple as Lords makes a last-inning rally. It is an out 5-4. Bonnie Bell getting a little bit tired, just have one out to complete it, though. And Krista St. Germain will be the batter she has to get out. And Germain will hit one to second base, right to Pomiato, but right through her legs it goes. One run scores, and it's 5-5. But Bonnie Bell in a classy move, a little peck on the cheek for Pomiato. Don't give up. And the next batter grounds one to Pomiato. She makes that play, throws the first. And we're headed to extras, top of the ninth. Angela Degatano, base hit for the Eagles. Bell's going to score herself all the way from second base. Chugs in, and it's 6-5 Eastchester. Bottom of the ninth, though, Lords two on. Desolates will try to bunt, and yes, yeah, she bunts into a double play. Degatano, nice play, throws to Soyford first base, and the Eagles win at 6-5. And one more game to Spratt Park we go, where even the golfers would rather watch softball than golf. East Chester Lords at Lords Degatano into the cloudy sky. One bounce to the fence. A triple for the Eagles. The score is 1-1. And with Degatano on third, Andrea Rossi. Chance to give East Chester a 2-1 lead. And she does. Base hit to left field. Degatano went to score. Eagles 2-1. Now it's 4-1 East Chester. Diversa and Teichner on the bases. And Bonnie Bell gets a base hit. Both score 6-1 East Chester. And Bell did the rest herself on the mound. Boy, you wouldn't want to face her if you could avoid it. Jill Moransky saw that here. She strikes out. And an 8-1 victory for East Chester as they defend their sectional title. The second straight year East Chester has won. They also went on to win the regional game, by the way. They finish, well, they don't finish. They're currently 26-1, Bell 24-1. And, and they go to the States this weekend, one of four teams left in Class C. This Saturday, chance to win it championship by beating Lords, who ranked number one on the state. She had 14 points, 10 rebounds, and four steals, while holding Lords' highest scorer and rebounded to just two points and one rebound. Her offense and defense led Eastchester to their first basketball state championship tournament at Glens Falls, where they made it to the finals. The school record holder for three-point shooting with a 65% average. That's phenomenal. Captain of basketball and softball, all county in both sports, she was an undefeated pitcher last season, 11-0, and second baseman on the undefeated softball team that won the 1990 New York State Class C Championship. A 90 average student, and now just a word about what's happening now. She ended the season undefeated as a pitcher. They went into the, the finals then of the tournament where they lost their first loss after a streak of 52 wins in a row in softball. But in the finals right now, in a two out of three, they lost that game. She came back and pitched the win to the second, then pitched another victory to win the Section 1 Class C title. Yesterday, she pitched a victory as the win team won the regional championship. Her record pitching this year is 24 and 1, and they now have to go into the states, hopefully get another state crown. The girl did it, Bonnie Bell.
In the Section 1 Class C final, it's the best two out of three. And when Our Lady of Lords knocked off East Chester in the opening game, not only did they take command of the series, they snapped East Chester's state-leading 52-game winning streak. The Eagles won a one-run game the next day to set up the rubber match. Coach Tom Walsh's girls came to hit in this one, wrapping out 10 to just one for Lords. The one that shattered the hopes of the Poughkeepsie school, this two-run shot by Bonnie Bell. Bell also tossing the one-hitter to lead the East Chester team. East Chester girls softball team. Question is, would they repeat as Class E state champs? They won the sectionals, the regionals. Let's go to Clifton Park and see if they win the states. Well, there they go, taking on Sandy Creek, 25 and 1. Bottom of the third, Sudo Vecchio up, and she lines one. Two hops to the left field fence, a triple. Tony and Pamiato scores. Eagles on top, 1 0. Same inning, bottom three. Elise Soifer at the plate. Now Soifer does something no one's ever done here at Clifton Park. Hits one out of the park, over the fence in left center field. Two run homer and three nothing. East Chester lead. Soifer congratulated her home plate by her teammates. And on the mound, Bonnie Bell, that was all the run she needed to work with. She threw a two hitter. Here she strikes out Thompson. The Eagles win the semifinal game 4-1 and advance to the state finals. They take on Marlboro High School. Marlboro 24-0 undefeated. But here come the Eagles. First inning, Bell lines one right off the pitcher's face. Renee Fiesel, but now Soifer's going to try to score. Comes around third, and the play at the plate, she's out. But look at this, the catcher is also out. A catcher and a pitcher injured on the same play. Fiesel had to leave the game for Marlboro. Now East Chester with a 2-0 lead. Bottom two, bases loaded. This, the hit of the game again, Soifer. Another one, this time doesn't go out, but clears the bases, a three-run double. Blows it open, East Chester takes a 5-0 lead. Only one time where they threatened bottom, rather top three. Bell in trouble, base hit here, two-run score, and Marlboro cuts the gap to 5-3. But that would be all that Marlboro would get. East Chester added a run, make it 6-3, and here Bonnie Bell will get the final out as East Chester repeats. They finish the season 28-1, two straight seasons, New York's Class C softball champions. Well, for the second straight year, the East Chester High School girls softball team won the Class C state championship. The team finished 28-1, giving the Eagles an amazing 105-9 mark over the past four seasons. On Tuesday, the town of East Chester recognized the team's success during their town board meeting. Supervisor Jim Duty presented each of the girls with certificates for their accomplishments. The Eagles skipper, Tom Walsh, also received praise, which he quickly gave back to his girl. In the beginning of the season, I knew we had a good team, but the way they came around and uh, stayed together, which was a nice thing, and their sportsmanship probably was the, was the best thing all year long besides the win. As for the team, the second time was twice as nice. A lot sweeter, definitely. It's um, a great experience. The first time around was totally unexpected. The second time around was even more unexpected. In the first championship, it was something new, something that's never been done before. And it's always nice to repeat, you know. No, not many people expected us to do it the first time, and the second time was more of a surprise. For two years, East Chester has been blessed with great pitchers. Jennifer Satrielli in 1990, and Bonnie Bell in 90 and 91. So the inevitable question comes up, who's better? Let's ask their catcher. I don't think there was a big difference. They're basically similar in their pitching styles. Um, Bonnie pitched harder than Jen did, and she had a lot more control. Like, because Jen, Jen had learned at a later age. Jen last year, super pitcher, super pitcher. She was a power pitcher in my eyes. Uh, great fastball, really fast, super fastball. She had a drop and a great changeup. Bonnie's a little more finesse. At least one thing's for sure. Both pitchers were very special. I mean, the two best pitchers in 13 years I've ever coached. And it's going to be tough, you know, to follow in their footsteps. As for next year and three-peat. Well, we mentioned states, but we need a lot of work next year. We're losing Bonnie, Elise, Sue, and Jen. And that's going to be tough with the batting and the pitching, of course, and first base and catching. So we're going to have to work a lot. So I don't think we're really reaching for states. We're reaching more for sectionals and... Same as we were this year. The Eagles got key contributions from several of their players, but one girl's impact was huge. Bonnie Bell was 26-1 on the mound for East Chester, 
and that helped her get her named Softball Player of the Year. All year long, she dared hitters to ring her bell. And how about Bell's progression? Seven and two in 89, 11 and 0 in 90, 26 and one in 91, including a 0.61 ERA and 189 strikeouts, three no hitters, two perfect games, total of six no hitters in her career. And Kevin, not that bad at the plate as well. This year had 419, five homers, 43 runs batted in. Where does she go after Eastchester High School? Straight to the Yankees or what? Well, right now, she's got Carolina on her mind. She's going to NC Charlotte on a full softball scholarship. That's great. Congratulations to her. Angela, been on the team now uh, a few years, and two years win this championship. Sweeter this time? Um, I don't know. Both times were really sweet. This time it was really fun doing it a second time, and it gave us more. Um, I don't know. It gave us more of a boost. It was really fun the second time. Do you guys Both have the Do you guys have the confidence feeling that you would win all along? Yeah, we had a feeling we would win, but from the beginning of the season, it was in the back of our minds. We weren't reaching for states. Last year, we were reaching for states. This year, we were just going to be the best we could, and it was really good to end up at states and winning it. How about the loss to Lourdes? How did that feel? That was tough after two, 52 wins, but, um, you know, that's part of competition, and it was a good game. We just didn't play too good, and Lourdes is <laughs> a hard team, so it was good losing for them. It was all right. I you know this season just ended, but any of the girls coming back talking all about next year at all? Well, we mentioned states, but we need a lot of work next year. We're losing Bonnie, Elise, Sue, and Jen, and that's going to be tough with the batting and the pitching, of course, and first base and catching. So we're going to have to work a lot. So I don't think we're really reaching for states. We're reaching more for sectionals and same as we were this year. So. Second time sweeter? Um, it's nice. <laughs> They're both, you know, really great. It's amazing. Tough to compare the two, huh? Yeah. You know, it was different this year. You know, I was on the mound, and, you know, last year I was in the field, and, um, you know, they're both... This year, I think, was more nerve-wracking for me compared to last year's. If you would have not won it, would you have felt like you almost let the team down since it was you pitching just about every game? Um, no, I, I mean, I think everyone's a part of it, and, um, you know, offensively and defensively. It's hard to, to win two years in a row, especially after one year with a lot of kids coming back. People might get cocky and stuff, but it didn't happen, really. No, I mean, um, we had, you know, a few new girls, and um, they came in, and uh, 
I mean, our defense was really good this year, and uh, we did well with the bats. You lost to Lourdes, and then you bounced back and won the next two. Yeah, well, you know, it's hard to win, you know, two back-to-back -back against a good team, which Lourdes is. And, um, you know, we just that game didn't have it, and uh, we came back on the, the third game, and we showed them. People said after Jen Saturelli left, you know, the team really wouldn't be that good anymore, and they certainly were. Now that you're gone, there could be a hole in pitching. Any chance for the team to uh, do very well next year? Um, yeah, they're going to be really competitive. I mean, they got a lot of girls coming back. Angela, you know, she's a great fielder and a great um, uh, hitter, and, uh, you know, she can move to different places, you know. And um, Tony Ann's coming back. I mean, they got a lot of girls now who will have a lot more experience, and hopefully that experience will help them. Good. Sweeter the second time? Um, yes, it was sweeter both times. Uh, it was very exciting. How would you compare this one as to the first championship? Well, um, the first championship, it was something new, something that's never been done before. And it's always nice to repeat, you know. No, not many people expected us to do it the first time, and the second time was more of a surprise. How did the uh, members of the team keep from getting cocky and keep a, a clear head, good attitude? Well, uh, some of the fans, and they always brought up our winning streak, you know, that at the time it was the longest in the country. But, uh, you know, we knew we just had to concentrate and not worry about that. But especially our loss, our first loss and only loss of the season to Our Lady of Lords, we knew right after that that was our only game we could afford to lose. And we had to keep on winning from there. How did you react? What did you, uh, did you guys say anything to each other after that game, or what was the, the mood? Well, every time we played Our Lady of Lords, we never really played our game until the third game that we played them in the sectional finals. And, um, you know, we just talked about it, said we had to regroup, and we came back to the second game, won in extra innings, and took it from there. Anyone give you a new nickname after that long home run? Uh, no, but it was just like, very exciting. <laughs> Good. Second time around, sweeter? A lot sweeter, definitely. It's um, a great experience. The first time around was totally unexpected. The second time around was even more unexpected. I really had a great time playing both years. Did you Just, feel like you had to work as a team harder the second time? Um, yes and no. Like certain things, we lacked um, experience working together. Because last year's team had moved up as a JV team to varsity altogether. And this year's team lacked this experience, but basically we overcame everything and working together we did really, really well. How about uh, catching Jennifer to catching Bonnie? The difference? Um, I don't think there was a big difference. They're basically similar in their pitching styles. Um, Bonnie pitched harder than Jen did, and she had a lot more control. Like, because Jen, Jen had learned at a later age all what Bonnie was learning. Bonnie's father pushed her, and Bonnie, she had a lot of experience. She was really good. I enjoyed catching from both of them. <laughs> Pretty easy, actually. Hopefully you'll catch someone like that in Manhattan, huh? Hopefully. Hopefully. You know, should be too bad. Finally, uh, playing for Skip. <laughs> what about it? Well, how is, how is he as a coach? Uh, I think he's a very good coach. He tries to teach us what we don't know, which is a lot. I myself, I learned a lot from my JV coach, so what I didn't learn, I came to him asking, and he taught me a few things. Basically, he knows what he's doing. He's had a lot of experience. I think he's a pretty good coach. So, uh, second time around, sweeter or what? Uh, yeah, I would say so. Uh, it was really sweeter. I mean, the girls this year really um, showed us a lot. And, I, you know, in the beginning of the season, I knew we had a good team. But the way they came around and uh, stayed together, which was a nice thing, and their sportsmanship probably was the, was the best thing all year long besides the win. The way they played and they, and they held their heads up high and, you know, win or lose, and even that loss to Lords, they came back, which was the nicest thing, too, to show that a good team could come back and play our game, which was nice, too. Isn't that tough when you have the longest winning streak in the country and everybody's gunning for you day in and day out? It is tough, but, you know, I really don't say anything about that. I try to forget about that and just get to our work that we have to do for that day and, and go day by day. That's the only way to do it, really. You know, it's tough to compare, but Bonnie this year to Jen last year. Well, you got two different types of pitchers, really. Uh, Jen last year, super pitcher, super pitcher. She was a power pitcher in my eyes. Uh, 
Great fastball, really fast, super fastball. She had a drop and a great changeup. Bonnie's a little more finesse. She's got the fastball, but she changes up, throws a curve, throws a drop, throws a rise ball. So it's very tough to compare. You know, they're, they're two. I mean, they're the two best pitchers in 13 years I've ever coached, and it's going to be tough. You know, to follow in their footsteps in the next couple of years. But you know, we'll work on it. We really will. Bonnie and Charlotte, she'll do okay, you think? I think so. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty brand new, pretty brand new program, Division One, and they're playing some top teams too, and top 20 teams. So it'll be it'll be good for her. And plus, I think she'll be playing other positions too, which is nice. So it's not where she's going to sit on the bench and and watch. You know, she'll be the DH or play third or maybe infield someplace. Now you do have some kids coming back next year, and, but even if you have a good season, a few losses to you might seem like a million. Yeah, but you know you got to take them. I really, you know, I, I got to understand. You know, the past four years, you know, we've just had super teams, and the kids on this year's team really worked hard. And I think they've learned a lesson, and uh, I think they'll come back pretty good next year. We'll just have to, you know, build around what we have this year and see what freshmen are coming up and sophomores that are coming up, and just hope for the best. You know, what can I say? You know, they'll get out there and work as hard as they did, they've done the last 13 years. So we have uh, tonight a very special presentation and be a privilege um, involving a very special team of young ladies from East Chester High School, the girls softball team, uh, who are here tonight. And uh, of course, uh, who in East Chester doesn't know uh, of their exploits now? For the second year in a row, they have uh, won the title in the Class C State Championship for softball for East Chester High School. And, uh, uh, that makes us all indeed very pleased and very proud of the accomplishments of these young women and of course their team, uh, their coaches, all of the people who have helped make it possible, not the least of which of course are their parents and uh, so many who have supported the games over this long season and of course going back into 1990 when they uh, performed that remarkable feat for the first time uh, so successfully. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome them here tonight so that the town of East Chester uh, can give due recognition to their efforts as well. Uh, we're pleased to have them. We had a reception before the meeting upstairs with a little cake and punch in their honor. And uh, we're happy that so many of the family could be here, as well as the administrators from the school, uh, to uh, celebrate this marvelous victory and uh, a record of achievement for this wonderful team uh, and the recognition they have brought to their hometown of East Chester. Uh, we also have to go out and uh, get another sign, ladies, now that uh, you've done it again, and we're happy to do it uh, for the entranceways to town. Uh, we're proudly displaying the 1990 uh, sign recognizing your accomplishments, and we hope to add to that in an appropriate way so that we can see uh, the duality of 1990 and 1991 uh, for the record that you have achieved. Uh, I'd like to welcome especially tonight the superintendent of the East Chester School District, uh, Dr. Charles Murphy, uh, also coach uh, and athletic director, uh, Dominic Ciceri, uh, who of course have played a major role in the success of this particular team and the entire athletic program at East Chester High School for so many years. Um, I'd like to, on behalf of the town board, my colleagues here, read the proclamation that we have uh, fashioned for the team as a whole and uh, if I could, at the end, ask uh, Dr. Murphy and Coach Ciceri and uh, Coach uh, Tom Skip Walsh, who was the, the coach of this team, to come forward and accept it on behalf of the, the team. I very much appreciate it. It's a proclamation of the town board, and it reads, whereas the East Chester High School girls softball team, Bonnie Bell, Teresa DeVersa, Angela DeGatano, Suzanne Del Vecchio, Beth Franklin, Carmela Guizzo, Liz Lickman, Judy Lynn, Dana Lynch, Tony Ann Palmiato, Andrea Rossi, Elise Seufer, Jennifer Teichner, achieved the highest honor two years in a row, winning the 1991 Class C State Championship. And whereas this remarkable achievement deserves due recognition and public acclaim, and whereas this distinguished title was earned by the team and coaches through teamwork, individual skill, extensive dedication, and supreme mastery of the game of softball, and whereas the 1991 East Chester High School girls softball team and coaches are further distinguished by a 28 and 1 record for the season, and whereas the townspeople of East Chester are enormously proud of the East Chester High School girls softball team 
for attaining the coveted 1991 state championship title, and whereas it is fitting and proper to recognize the extraordinary accomplishments of the 1991 East Chester High School girls softball team and coaches, now therefore be it resolved that I, James P. Duty, supervisor of the town of East Chester, on behalf of the town board of the town of East Chester and all its people, do hereby proclaim warmest congratulations and heartfelt commendations to the coaches, members of the East Chester High School girls softball team and their families on this occasion of celebration and to further proclaim today, Tuesday, June 18, 1991, as East Chester High School girls softball team and coaches day in the town of East Chester, given under our hand and seal today, Tuesday, June 18, 1991. Coach, Dr. Murphy. This has been a, a great thrill this year, and I really appreciate the town of Eastchester. They've really given us a lot of support, and I want to thank them very much, Mr. Duty, especially, for helping us when we came back from our trip in Albany and uh, giving us a nice reception and a town ride through the town, which is a real thrill for the girls, and, and it was very appreciated. Um, I'd like to thank the police and the fire department, Captain Rick Lynch, too, who did a really nice job sending us up to Albany and then following us back. And, bringing us back into town again, which is really nice. Um, cable 3, who's been with us all year long, which has really been super, and Cable 35, which has been following us and putting our games on, it's, which has been great, because it's nice to see the games after you. It's kind of difficult when you're playing them and watching them, and you really can't relax, and then you can relax after, so that was really nice, too. Um, i also like to thank Bunny Rappaport, who's really put together a lot of this for the past two years, our trips last year, and then this year with the reception. I want to thank you very much. I know I always forget some people sometimes, so I apologize if I do. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Joe DeCrenza, my assistant coach who couldn't be here tonight. Uh, he's got graduate school, and I know he's going to do real well in it because he's a heck of a coach, and I uh, hope he continues with the school system and us. And I'd like to say thank you to the girls because uh, this year was probably the sweetest victory of all. Um, they just played one heck of a tournament, and their sportsmanship was just totally I mean, there's no words that, I mean, the way they played and the way they behaved, real ladies, which was the nicest thing besides the win. And it was just super. And I have to give them an applause for just a great. <laughs> there's really one last person uh, at the course of the school system, you know, who's really helped us tremendously throughout the, uh, the years. And there's really, as I said, one person or a group of people that have me behind me and uh, have to deal with me throughout my life. And that's my family. And I'm really you know, thanking them for sticking with me, my wife and my two kids, too. Thank you. It has really been a team effort. And uh, as Skip has said, there are so many people to thank uh, over the course of the year. We'll never do it adequately, but um, we, we do also want to recognize the volunteers from Cable 35. Uh, I believe Paul Votano and Jerry Fishoff and uh, uh, also Alan Meltzer uh, were very instrumental. They followed the team. They did all of that work on a volunteer basis, and uh, they really brought the games to all of the town of Eastchester by having that wonderful facility on cable television. We thank them for their time. Uh, there are two senior citizens. I hope uh, uh, Dr. Murphy and, and, and the coaches won't mind if I mention. I was privileged to see one or two of the games, and there are two gentlemen who I think uh, went to practically every game, and I, I could be wrong, but who became kind of the, uh, the, the team good spirit or the, the mascots, if that's not a, a, a wrong word, for the girls. And of course, uh, uh, John Bell, who I affectionately call Pop, and uh, George Miller, I think, uh, have been at nearly every game, and I, I think they deserve a round of applause for their support, too. <laughs> and 
And now to the ladies who made it all possible, we not only have a proclamation for the school and for your team and coaches, we would like to recognize each of you individually for your effort in 1991 in achieving this. And uh, we'd be very pleased to present a, a certificate of recognition. Uh, we're actually running out of awards. You've been here so many times. Uh, uh, but we have a certificate of recognition for you uh, from the town of Eastchester for your efforts in 1991 and as you go on to uh, future fine endeavors in the future. I'd like to call you up individually, if I may, and we'll start with uh, a very important person on the team, certainly, and that is Ms. Bonnie Bell. Teresa Diversa. Congratulations. Thank you. Angela Degatana. Congratulations. Suzanne Del Vecchio. Beth Franklin. Carmela Gizzo. Liz Lichtman. Judy Lynn. Dana Lynch. Tony Ann Palmiotto. Congratulations, Tony. Andrea Rossi. Elise Seufer. <laughs> Jennifer Teichner. <laughs> and not to forget the two gentlemen in these girls' lives, we have a certificate of recognition for Coach Tom Walsh and Assistant Coach Joe DeCrenza. Since the town has been so good to us, um, I'm going to re reward them with the certificate too. <clears throat> and it says New York State Public High School Athletic Association proudly presents to the town of East Jessup for recognition of participation in the state championship girls softball, June 8, 1991. <laughs> the coach just explained he couldn't, he just got it today. <laughs> right. I, I want to thank the girls. Uh, I, I understand that, uh, let's see, if I have this correctly, uh, four of the girls are seniors, and seven of the girls are uh, from the same team as last year. In other words, they've come into the team this year as well. So, I mean, that's a good, strong record. And I know that you will uh, have set your way and the future teams on a, on a very strong course into 1992 and beyond. Um, as some of you ladies leave Eastchester, I know that this will be one of the premium memories that you'll bring with you, and you'll live with this experience uh, all the days of your lives. But remember that you take with you our heartfelt gratitude and our good wishes for your future, wherever it may lead you. Thank you for being with us, and again, congratulations. Thank you.